It's an ant's life. My story of life in the nest. This is the title page. By ants with help from Steve Parker. Meet me. I've got a few minutes to spare so I can finally start my journal. Some of us have been given a short rest from work, but like all ants, I like to stay busy. So I've only got time for a few facts about me and my friends. All ants work very hard. We love to. Work is all we do and all we want to do. There's no time for playing. By the time I've worked, eaten, and rested, it's time to go back to work again. Yippee! List of things I know. Ants are tiny. Ants brains are even tinier. We don't have much room for learning, but we are born knowing all we need to know. How to work. Ants are insects. I found all this out from old aunt, our oldest and wisest sister who knows everything. Old aunt let me nibble some pages out of a book she found, which explains it all. I've taped some of the pages in my journal. Rest period over. I'm on duty again. Back to work. Hooray! Friends on the internest. All my nest mates look a lot like me. In fact, just like me. But I've got other ant friends too. Here are some pictures they've sent me by snail mail and on the internest. They live in nests far away from my sidewalk, and their lives sound very exciting. Like me, they are all busy, busy, busy. Biter. Look at those huge jaws! Biter's a bulldog ant. She lives in Australia. When her nest is attacked, Biter uses those jaws to bite her enemies. Sounds pretty useful to me. Sweets. My favorite pen pal. She's a honeypot ant from North America. She's sweet, gooey, and fat. Her abdomen is full of a sticky, sugary liquid. When her sisters stroke her, she oozes a bit of the liquid for them to drink. I bet it tastes great. Bianca. This postcard is from my friend Bianca, who's not really an ant at all. She's a termite. You can see her nest on the left. It's very tall, much bigger than my nest. She lives there with millions of her sisters. The nest is in Africa where it's very hot and dry. Bianca is very soft and white, not hard and black like me. But she's a sensible termite and spends most of her time in the dark, damp nest, away from the baking hot sun. Lucy. Lucy is called a leaf cutter ant. She cuts off pieces of leaf with her jaws and carries them like a sunshade, and so do all her friends. Jaws. Jaws is a full-time soldier ant. She and her friends defend their nest from enemies who want to eat their eggs and grubs. Soldier ants have much bigger heads and jaws than I do. They're fierce. Where I live. Another break and a chance to write about our nest. It's big, with lots of tunnels and loads of chambers or rooms. The roof is huge and hard and flat. Inside, it's just right, dark, cool, and damp. And it's very busy, with lots and lots of nestmates scurrying everywhere. Each of us learned our way around from a map we were given when we became adults. I've never been outside, but I'm on the list to be a forager, so I should go out soon. Can't wait. Outside is where food comes from. Old Aunt says it's even bigger than our nest. Some nestmates say the outside is dark, like the nest, but others say it's light and sunny. I guess I'll have to find out for myself. Visit to the Royal Chamber. I've just seen the Queen. She's my mother. She's also mother to all of my nestmates. Our father died ages ago, even before old aunt hatched. 
and she must be the oldest ant in the nest, apart from the queen, of course. The queen is enormous. She only has one job, laying eggs, and that keeps her busy. She lies in the royal chamber and lays dozens of eggs an hour. Today my job was to take the eggs to the nursery. Last time I was allowed to feed the queen. Next time maybe I'll be allowed to clean away her droppings. What an honor! My mother, the queen, she's in the middle. Growing up. There are always babies of some kind in the nest. First eggs turn into grubs, then cocoons, and finally into ants, just like me. Old Ant says this is called metamorphosis. Right now, my nestmates are all female. The queen is our mother, so that makes us all sisters. Male ants appear later, at breeding time. Egg first. Today I was busy checking the nurseries, and it reminded me of my earliest days. I started off life as an egg in Egg Nursery 1A. I was small, round, and creamy white. Being an egg is kind of boring. You don't do anything. Greedy grubs. Next I hatched into a grub. And then I was always hungry. Old Ant's book says another name for grub is larva. Once the eggs in my group had all hatched, they renamed our room Grub Nursery 1A. We all wriggled, grew bigger, shed our skins, or molted, and ate all the time. The adult ants on nursery duty were always rushing around to keep us well fed. Cozy Lazy Cocoons I can remember feeling completely exhausted after all that eating. All of us grubs then turned into cocoons. I can't remember much about that stage. I think I just rested without eating any more food. Old Ant says that cocoons are also called pupae. The Big Day This picture shows me just minutes after breaking out of my cocoon. At last I was a grown-up ant. I was handed a map of the nest and a list of jobs and duties. I felt very important. Another busy, busy day. Today I've been working in the nursery. I had so many jobs. Here's what I did. I fanned some eggs by waving my antennae and legs to keep them cool. The nest is very warm now. It seems to get warm, then cool, then warm again, and so on. Old Aunt says it's called day and night, whatever that means. I cleaned, rolled, and turned some eggs to make sure they don't get moldy and die. I moved some eggs from one chamber to another. A group of workers is going to make the old chamber bigger because our nest is getting too crowded. I cleared away molted skins. Grubs shed their skins a lot as they grow, especially when they turn into cocoons. I cleaned up some grubby grubs and carried away their droppings. I fed some grubs. They eat a sticky soup made from all kinds of things. We mix together leaf sap, nectar from flowers, seeds, and chewed up worms. Yummy! The grubs grow very quickly on this tasty diet. Me and my fellow workers on nursery duty. Look how busy we are! I think we keep the cleanest, neatest nursery in the whole world. Outside at last! Wow! Today I followed a forager, and we went outside. First, she tapped the ground with her antennae to pick up the trail. This is a scent trail that earlier foragers put down as they go along. Old Ant calls the scent pheromone. If we follow the scent trail, it will lead us straight to the food, and we won't get lost. These early foragers must be very brave to go out and look for food. It's a jungle out there. The green strips, called grass, are so tall I can't see their tops. There are huge green flat things that take forever to walk across. They're called leaves. Outside was light and bright. I'm told it'll get dark later on. Weird, huh? So that's what day and night are all about. Enemy attack! 
Today was so scary, I can hardly write. Ladybug came too close to our nest. I'm sure she wanted to eat us or carry away our grubs and cocoons. Hundreds of my sisters and I all tapped our antennae and gave off our alarm scent. Attack the enemy, it said. One group of soldiers stood right in front of Ladybug. They tried to bite her, but she was biting back too. She even chomped one ant in half. Soldiers squirted something nasty called acid at Ladybug. They aimed their backsides at her and fired the acid where it would hurt, at Ladybug's eyes and antennae. It seemed to really sting her, but she still didn't go. So more soldiers ran behind her. They bit her legs and backside and squirted more acid. Ladybug finally realized our nest was too big and there were too many of us. She gave up and crawled away but I bet she'll be back. After the battle, we were exhausted. Some of the older soldiers told me about their enemies, and I drew pictures of them. I also found a picture of a terrifying, enormous ant killer in Old Ant's book. Ant enemy number three, beetle. Ant enemy number 12, wasp. Spills and thrills. Another exciting day. I went outside again because the early foragers had found a new source of food. Old Ant says it's called a picnic. There were all kinds of yummy things spread out on the grass. I'd never seen or tasted most of them before. We sent signals back to the nest. We need more foragers. Soon there were lots of us scuttling around and snipping off pieces of food to carry back to the nest. Some of the foods were awful. The giant green and red thing covering the grass was fuzzy and tasteless. The shiny silver things were too hard to bite and very slippery to walk on, but other foods were delicious, like the hard white lumps. They tasted sweet like the nectar we get from flowers. New foods I tried today. I described the food to old aunt. She told me what they were so I could write them down. The sweet white lumps are called sugar. Strawberries, huge red balls with seeds on them, taste sweet and juicy. Bread, a giant white slab with small spongy holes in it. It tastes slightly sweet, sort of like grass seeds. Pink flaky stuff on the bread, tastes salty. Old Ant thinks it's salmon, a big fish, whatever that is. Jam filled cake. Delicious, sweet, gooey stuff inside two moist, crumbly layers. Huge greenish tube, hard and slippery, tastes sour. It's called a pickle. Yucky! Guess in the nest. I have been very busy today, taking a survey of the nest. The queen asked me to list all the non-ants living with us at the moment. There are always lodgers and visitors down here. They like dark and cool places too. It's a good thing that I've got sensitive antennae. Otherwise, I couldn't tap my nestmates to talk to them. My antennae also help me feel my way around and find the knot ants in the dark. Some knot ants are heaps of trouble. One of the worst is spider. She's big and she moves in a sneaky, silent way. Sometimes she steals our eggs and cocoons, so we're always on the lookout for her. She's even older than old ants. Some non-ants, like woodlouse, are no trouble. She eats old empty cocoons, molted skins from our grubs, empty ants' eggshells, and even grub droppings. We have to pick up droppings when we're cleaning, but we'd never eat them. Yuck. In general, she helps to keep the nest clean and neat. I sometimes tap her with my antennae to say, thank you. Our most favorite non-ants are aphids, but they live outside on a farm. I hope to visit them tomorrow. On the farm. Today I went outside with the farmer ants. We marched to a big plant covered with strange creatures called aphids. They have six legs like me, but they're smaller, hairier, and some are bright green. When you stroke an aphid, it oozes a sweet, sticky juice from its backside. We call it honeydew. It tastes delicious. 
Ants get along well with aphids. They eat plants and make honeydew. We eat the honeydew, and in return, we protect the aphids from fierce aphid eaters, like ladybug. And ants can get killed in that way. I think being a farmer ant is the most dangerous job in the whole nest. Luckily, I don't have to do it very often. Looking after aphids is hard work. Sometimes farmer ants have to move them to a safer place, and it can take forever. Aphids are so slow and stupid, not like us. We are quick, clever, and we do what we're told. It was a long, scary day, but we all made it back to the nest, safe and sound. After we got home, we spit up some of the honeydew we'd eaten and shared it with our nest mates. What a party! Swarm in the warm. Today was strange. The weather's been so muggy lately and the nest has been so crowded that we've all been on edge. Suddenly, lots of my nest mates left home just like that. I was watching the latest batch of grown-ups come out of their cocoons. There were sisters and, to my amazement, brothers too. The first male ants I've ever seen. Each new ant had four thin, flappy body parts. Old ants called these things wings. First they stood at the nest entrances. Then they flapped their wings and suddenly rose into the air. They were fantastic. Old ant says they will fly until they meet winged ants from other nests. Then they will mate and breed. The male ants will die but the females will become queen ants and set up new nests far away. The Great Disaster This is the first real break I've had all day. Disaster struck the nest, and we all had to work really hard without stopping. Whew! Just after the winged ants left, there was a huge storm. Usually when it rains, a bit of water trickles into our nest. Sister nest workers soon fix any damage, but this time the water just poured in. Water gushed through the tunnels and floated, flooded the chambers. It was terrible. Eggs, grubs, and cocoons got swept away. The nursery walls turned to mud and the ceilings fell in. Lots of foragers and nursery workers were trapped and couldn't get out. It was an awful mess. But we ants are not easily beaten. We worked hard to rescue all the eggs, grubs, and cocoons we could, and started to repair the damage. By tomorrow, I bet the nest will be almost as good as new. Sun again. Yesterday was a very bad day, but now the sun's come out again, and all the survivors are back doing their old jobs. Old Aunt slipped in a wet tunnel yesterday and hurt her leg. Well, she is very old and doesn't move as quickly as she used to. It happens to the best of us ants. We start walking instead of running everywhere. Then we need more and more rest breaks and start making mistakes. I think that old ant will soon have to stop working. When it happens, some of the others will look after her. Like all ants, old ant has always loved working, so she'll probably miss it when she retires. Luckily, I still have lots of time to work before I have to retire. Collecting nectar from the flowers is today's job. The days are getting shorter, and I think the dark, cold time that Old Aunt warned us about will soon be here. She called it winter. It's time to put this journal care away carefully. Perhaps next year another ant will continue my story. It's been quite a time, what with the ladybug attack, the strange winged ants leaving home, and the great flood. I wonder if next year will be as interesting. Old Ant's Wise Words Old Ant has a great memory. She knows more than 10 things. I wrote them down so that we'll know them too, even after she's gone. Here is a list of words you may not know and also definitions for them. The end.